Just because you've tried preg pegging doesn't mean you've had prostate stimulation to camel. You have had the kind of experience now where you shouldn't even need the drugs to find that place again. That's why you think you're freaking out when you smoke weed. You're knocking on the door to the other place. Um, I don't know. I tried really hard yesterday to think about it. Um, last night I spent another good deal of time thinking about this. Oh, it was that fucking bird shit. But, um... I don't think I can access that same type of place without a drug again. Man, it's a real crazy thing. I, I, thinking more on it, though, I can recall it very well. Like, I can remember what it felt like pretty, like, pretty accurately, I think. And I can do it now without, like, having, like, well, I feel kind of panicky, but I, but I, I can tell I'm not going to get a panic attack, so I feel less panicky, I guess, now thinking about it. Because I don't think I can get back there without some amount of drugs again. People say, I obviously can't have an opinion on this because I don't know, I've never done meditating, but there are people that say that with years and years of meditation, you can reach, like, an ego death-esque place just on meditation without drugs. I don't know if that's possible. I, I would lean towards thinking no, but I mean, who knows, I mean. What is it about the thought of the place that has induced panic attacks before? Is it lack of control? Um, I've thought about this a great deal, and I think the problem is, the whole reason why the ego death experience was so bad for me is that I'm so kind of like narcissistic, um, and I really enjoy my existence so much that the idea that all of this existence is fake and I've got to go live in another existence would suck because like I've spent so much time like building up this one and establishing things that I like in this one that to lose all of that in favor of another existence would just be kind of shitty. Like I really wouldn't enjoy that. But then I thought about it even more, um, and now I realize that, well, if the other existence is real and this one isn't, I could probably make it another one as well. Let's be real. I'm a pretty funny guy. I could make it in any, in any reality I have to. Although doing it in a room watching a crazy fucking TV with three other people seems like it would be really boring. But I'm sure I can make it work. I mean, if that really was... If that was it, I mean, we'd figure it out, right? What if in that reality everyone was Sam Harris? Overcoming your narcissistic self with more narcissism seems fitting. Yeah, it seems kind of bad. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Because from an ego death, you're supposed to not be as narcissistic, I think. But hey, <laughs> dude, it's working for me. Are you really so egotistical that you think your mind can have created the entire universe by itself? All the games, all the music, movies, and brain just conjured them up? Well, I mean, technically, your brain is conjuring it all up right now, right? Um, everything that you see is put together in your mind. You basically, you have some organs that allow you to retrieve data from the outside world, but the picture that you put together of that world is being created in your brain right now. It doesn't exist. Um, like, th there is no place outside of your mind where the world, where your are Okay. Sorry, hold on. Your perception of the world only exists in your mind, right? So mathematics and, and, and fucking video games and everything you're watching and hearing and experiencing, all of those things are put together by your brain. Now, whether it needs external input to do it or not, um, I mean, is obviously unknowable. But um, I mean, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say like, wow, like you think your brain can create all this stuff on the fly? Well, I don't know, maybe. I mean, it kind of is. It's making the picture for me right now on the fly. I think it needs external data to do that, but I can never know that, right? Are you also an ontological anti-realist? I don't think so, but I haven't, like, grappled with ontology well enough to really know, so... I've... Did you learn to be an egotist, or do you think everyone is an egotist to some degree? I think that I just lived, like, a very independent life, and it kind of, like, led to me being the independent, egotistical person I am, I think. If you try and think things into existence, it's pretty hard. Yeah, that's true, but, like, um... It might be that, like, your brain is pretty convinced that it wants to make this reality real for you, so it's not going to let you do things that would break the rules that you've already established for yourself, right? There was a really weird thing that happened to me a, a week ago when I was in one of those panicky moments. I was staring at a Discord conversation, and I remember thinking, um, this person hasn't responded to me for four hours. If I was really creating the universe, I would make this person respond to me right now. And then I thought, well, hold on. But, like, I would never give myself that much control of my own reality because then I would know for sure that it's fake. But then I remember thinking, but actually, I could make myself do it because just because they're responding to me doesn't necessarily mean that I'm making it happen. It could just be a coincidence. And then right after I thought that, they started typing. Whoa! That was a... That was a memer. It's pretty funny how you really think this is the real reality. That's, uh... That was part of what my auditory hallucinations were making fun of me for when I was, um... When I was hallucinating. 
he really thinks this is real. And then Chris would be like, I can't believe it. Like, he actually thinks that we're talking and it's not just his mind scripting at all right now. <laughs> oh, shit. But it was, I mean, it obviously was, right? Because it was a hallucination. A hallucination, a hallucination, an hallucination. Are you a determinist? Yeah, I think so. This is So this is a mean question, but what makes you think you're not still in that hallucination? Um, that world is so much different and plays by so many different rules than this world does that I'm pretty certain that those are totally different experiences. And I have, I have a way that I can interpret that reality because I'm so familiar with this one. I can, I can um, not extrapolate. Um, I, um, what do you call it when you take something and you can extract it? Oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm new here, so I should use GG chat instead of Twitch chat. Do you even read Twitch chat or only GG chat? Only GG chat, but I try to read Twitch chat sometimes. Um, is it? I think it's extrapolate, right? Like you can blank classical mechanics more or less from quantum mechanics, right? I think it's extrapolate from, right? Like I can extrapolate and understand that reality entirely from the reality that I'm in now. Do you think that if you were one-on-one -on -one with someone sober, could they talk you into a panic attack if they knew about your experiences? Um, I don't think so right now. I feel pretty good right now. When you were tripping, were you like a? Was it like a dream where it was hard to realize you were in a drama? Um, no dream has ever felt as real as that experience felt, so. But then again, you guys might have very real sounding dreams, so. Do you ever feel that sanity is something that could, with thought, break? Um, I don't know. I kind of wonder sometimes if I'm maybe like, if I'm just the kind of person. In an Inception world, what would your totem be? I know dune bugs would be his penis. Wait, fuck. I don't know. What was the question again? Uh, my dreams aren't very real. I don't remember what fuck. I don't remember what I was answering. Oh, I think, um, I think I kind of wonder if I'm, because I think about these things so much and I was dealing with like uh, epistemology and everything at the time, I kind of wonder if the state of my life I was at just made me more susceptible to the mushroom shit, like kind of breaking my mind more. I'm not sure. Maybe if, like, a normal person that doesn't give a fuck about any of this shit would just do it and be like, Oh, dude, like, that was a fucking wild ride, man. Like, oh, shit, dude. Oh, it was just crazy. You know? I, I have no idea. I feel most people can't even conceive of this world as being perceivable by them. As only being perceivable by them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I could, like, intellectually, but experiencing... I feel like once you've experienced, like, a crazy amount of fucking psychedelics, you... You'll start to realize how totally fucking arbitrary your physical perception of the world is and how hilariously like naive it is to think that like you're absolutely like um perceiving reality you should consider trying salvia i just want to make sure my mind is put together after my most recent thing right before i do any more drugs it's not going to be for a while i'm sorry you want to try dmt eventually i think i could do like i don't know maybe the scary one actually sounds like LSD, although that one guy said LSD wasn't as extreme as shrooms. But, um, the thing about LSD, the thing that scares me is just the time thing is so hard, guys. Like, was DMT the one where it's like a 20, where, where like it's a 20 minute thing? Like, I feel like that is doable. The, the shrooms being like six to eight hours, oh God, and LSD being like 12 hours, oh man, dude. It's very hard to communicate what it feels like when you're trapped in realities of time. Like, even in, even when you know, like, well, listen, I know that this is only going to last for six or seven hours. When it takes you a reality to get through, like, you have to live in eternity to get through single minutes at a time. Who cares if it's only six more hours? Like, you're basically telling me, like, okay, well, six hours to go. You only have, what, 300 plus eternities more that you have to live through? Like, you know, it's... Yeah, DMT being shorter seems like it'd be easier to... Do you think a repeated drug highs permanently damage your brain? I hope not. I would never do anything that I feel like that could that could happen. That's the only reason I did a fuck ton of shrooms, because I've never seen anything about shrooms being bad. Although it says it does open you to like new experiences, which I kind of wonder if that's happening with me recently based on stuff going on, but I'm not sure. It's really hard to tell. Um, I feel like there's just other stuff going on in my life right now that's having an impact on me that's being masked by kind of the shroom shit. Um, which I hope is true. Because I've never read, there's no clinical data that shows that psychedelics can do permanent damage to your brain. Classic Salvia meme. Clicky seven tenths. 
Uh, this is the only one I'm clicking today. Don't donate me links to click, guys. Hello, and welcome to Driving on Salvia. I'm Eric, your host. Now, today we're gonna take the car out onto the streets, and we're gonna do some K-turns. Ooh, I waited a long time <laughs> on that one. Normally, I'm supposed to hold your salvia so long. <laughs> okay. You can lucid dream, so do you think you could induce that dream state within a lucid dream? Um, I have no idea. 